Limburg Schools, um, wait a minute, Limburg Schools Special Board Meeting of Education number 1599 is now called to order. Dr. Lake, do we have any changes to the agenda? We do not. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. You guys are faster than my writing. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes, 7-0. So 4.0 is individual action items. We have three. We have an HR report. We have the fiscal end uh, year to close our books out. And then we will vote for um, the proposed budget, which changes throughout the year. So let's see. Do I, we'll go, we'll go ahead and do 4.01 human resource Report, do I have a motion to approve the certified personnel upgrade of duties and certified personnel request for release from contract as presented? So moved. Second. Uh, any questions? I don't think we talk about that. So all in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Okay. So we'll move on to 4.02, fiscal end year. 2023 to 24 fund transfers and internal restrictions to open discussion do i have a motion to approve the june 30th 20 2024 year in transfers and the internally restricted funds as presented so moved second okay any questions for joelle comments can we just talk about it a little bit um, on the transfers, this is one of the reasons we meet late after the first June meeting because um, there's some point you can only do certain transfers and once and um, we like to look really hard and see when um, what our end of year balances are. I mean, payroll was just posted for teachers on 25th was the last payroll day. So we're, it's been a tight week because we're, we're closing early and we're here early 27th. So um, all of that was done, and then we look at how much money we have. So teacher's fund is always um, a full transfer because we don't levy the amount in there to cover all those funds. That's a standard transfer every year to zero out that balance. Um, and then food service, um, generally food service capital is if they spend dollars out of the capital account, we transfer that to food from food service to the capital account. And then general fund to capital account is the one that's a little bit more, um, I guess, difficult because um, what we want to do is bring that to zero. We normally have a balance in there. In past years, we've had a balance. So we this year, we brought the balance to zero with $523,000 transfer. Um, we did transfer for several prop 2019 open invoices that I have out still to be paid. Um, I tried really hard to get those done on June 30th, but there's a couple more to be paid in July. And then the good news is we are putting an extra $500,000 in there um, based on where our numbers were after all the payrolls were run and um, accounts payable were run. We do have one more account payable run um, this week for things that are hanging out there, but we are adding balance to capital fund balance reserve for next year at 500000 So I think the goal is to probably get that to a million over the next couple of years, but that is a good start. And then at the bottom, we just talk about um, carry forward requests. Carry forward requests are dollars that the buildings, our departments did not spend, um, and we started allowing them to carry that forward instead of using use it or lose it, buy all the post-its and storm for, for the next year. Uh, so they carry forward, but they have to give us um, a memo that explains why they didn't spend their dollars and what they're saving up for. And so that amount is about 1.5 million. So that really is dollars that are budgeted in this year. Um, that are being carried forward over next year. So we always do that as an amendment in the next first amendment of the next year because I don't want to look like a recurring expense because it's actually money that's in fund balance um, right now. And we are going to take um, any eligible expenditures um, and carry forward because a lot of times we're saving up money for furniture, things like that. We're going to use prop money for that um, as those come through next year. And that will help us increase our actual general fund balances. And then um, we did, as a reminder, um, the board approved a resolution back in, I have one of my other notes, to advance spend on Prop 2024. 
And so um, there is about a million, a million one, and we might have a few more with um, Devin's last payroll, at last accounts payable of um, money that will be in reimbursed as soon as we get funded at the end of July for Prop 2024. So our fund balances would have been a little bit higher, but we pre-funded that, um, which made a difference. So okay. those are the year-end transfers and the restricted funds on July 1. Anybody? Questions? Okay, very good. Do I have, um, we already did our motion. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it is approved. All right, 4.03, fiscal year 2024 to 25, preliminary budget adoption. To okay. open discussion, do I have a motion to approve the 24-25 budget for all funds as presented? So moved. Second. Okay, Joelle, are any questions for Joelle? Just a couple items. Um, I noted in the board memo, but um, why this is noted as preliminary, I think that's a topic just to mention, is there's a lot that we still don't know when we adopt the budget at this time of the year. Um, so I list all of those there. I mean, we, we don't know our assessed valuation. We haven't set our tax levy. We don't know our ADA. I mean, these are all giant factors in, in what our revenue is. So um, as those things come to be over July and August, we will bring amendments to the board if anything changes. Um, we also, um, in this budget, we do have three back pockets. Um, we did have, you know, four. We thought we weren't going to replace four elementary teachers, but then the class enrollment sizes went up enough where we, we went ahead and replaced those um, staff. But we have three unfilled teacher, three back pockets in it, and if those don't get filled, that is also money that will be in available in fund balance. So, Joelle, this, for people that may watch this, the back pocket is for us to, for growth, enrollment, section comes, you know, we need an extra section of biology at the high school, or we have a third grade section, we always budget for that, um, and then it's just there, and if we don't use it, then like Joelle said, it goes back in the back pocket. So, people that are watching online, yep, that's what yep, the back pocket what I mean. is, so it's, if you for, see our salary it's for schedule. teachers and staff, and just for us to problem solve as we, when we come back in August, we don't want to be reactionary there. We'd rather be on the positive side of that. Um, and then it's just money that we have if, in case we need it. Yeah. So. so if you look at our teacher salary schedule and the numbers in the FTE and there, there's three, I guess, placeholders in there. So three more FTE than there actually is hired. Um, and Brian will always use them because he never lets me have the money. Uh, and, um, I think that's it on that. I did want to make just a few points. Um, I was talking to Beth yesterday about um, things that are unique in this budget for this year. Um, let me find my notes. One item where, where um, the positive thing I'll say first is following several years of strategic spend down of operating capital fund reserves, the board administration have set a goal to add back operating capital reserves over the next several years. Like I said, 500,000 was added to um, capital balance and this budget has a surplus of about 800,000 um, to start the year um, which is means we're adding back already to operations um, the reason behind that is twofold um, the state was good to us this year very good um, they increased a very important factor in the state formula the state adequacy target I'll explain what it means later because it's very complicated but uh, it's a key component in the calculation of state aid, and it went from um, 6375 to that 6375 to 6760, um, and that generated at the state level about $3 million. We haven't seen $3 million at the state level in my time here. Maybe when we went full day K. Yeah. That was the last time. And so um, I think that's reaction from the state on seeing a lot of what's come out of the pandemic and ADA and it's a small step towards fixing Missouri formula to not just be on student attendance. Um, another one that because reassessment, and it is a non-reassessment year, so local growth is minimal. Um, I did budget for new construction to be about the same as last year. Um, but I do think we're going to see some changes ahead with 
local and property taxes, so we might get one more good reassessment year before some of the things with seniors come in play, probably two or three years out. Um, one item that would also have helped us um, have more surplus is the delinquent taxes. Um, this year, protested taxes were so high in St. Louis County that um, we budget for delinquent tax collection annually between five and 800,000. And this year, our payback of protest, I explained this in the budget memo, how unique St. Louis County is with releasing all their protests at the end of the year, and then the district, when those are settled at the state tax commission, has to pay the St. Louis County back. Um, we had a budget of about 500,000 this year, and we ended up a negative one million because the paybacks were so high. So in the current budget this year, I have budget zero collections for delinquent. Um, like I said, normally that's a five to $800,000 number. So if you would add that, that to our revenue, that would have also had an impact on our surplus to start the year. So there's always something that leaves the budget unperfect, but that's why I have a job, I guess. <laughs> And I do want to thank my team. Dawn's not here. I told her to stay home today because she put in <coughs> tons of hours. I couldn't do it without their support. And so it's a team effort. I do just want to make a note in the report that Joelle did. So fund balance looks like it's going to increase about 4%. Yeah. Is, that, is that correct? So, and that's, that's a conservative number. Over the course um, of the year, yeah, that's we, what we're we looking at. We feel really good that that's a, that it actually could be higher than that 4%. Yeah. Um, just depending, making sure we don't. I do note in there we are continuing with our expenditure. Really look hard, look at expenditures. I said now we've lost our weight. We're on our diet now. We got to keep maintaining. So yeah. we we have those processes in place this year about the new things about change orders and how we're going to go down that road for the <coughs> 2024 projects and um, our decision making framework. So anytime that. If anyone wants to add expenditure to the budget, they have to present the decision-making framework for the board to review it, the why, um, you know, the ad needs to be placed, so. And again, I know Joel mentioned the strategic spend down and just some examples of that, like our HVAC systems across the district, we spent about 1.5 million to get them up and running the way they should run because they just needed that, they hadn't been done. and. Um, technology is another example. You know, when we got here, there was lots of we had lots of issues going on with technology. Now, the money we've spent there, um, it's like a light switch. You just show up and it and it works, and you expect it to work. And so we've really strategically to get our systems and our buildings and our facilities. That's why that was a strategic spend down. And we feel really good about where the buildings are, where our processes are, where we've found efficiencies in those things. And so now, this first year in it, we're looking at increasing that by at least 4% back. So, and you know, we've, this board wasn't necessarily all of you on the dais when we did this, um, basically fund balance, pay yourselves back. You know, we, that 25 to 28 range, you know, don't like to get below 20. We did get below 20, um, but now we're gonna be back north of that. So, yep, so that's just kind of, more for people out there watching this board meeting yeah. to kind of the, understand the why. The fund balance percentage is, that calculation is your um, cash in the bank for general operations. Um, and you, that's the numerator. The denominator, you, you look at um, your expenditures for the year in operations. And it's really how long, how many months you could last. So 20%, 25% is our goal. And we were at 18 this year. So like I said, um, but next year we'll be above that 20. Yeah, And again, we kind of that 25 to 20 range, you know, mm -hmm. like if we're at 25 and there's something we want to do a one-time expense with, like for the district, we know we need to do this, then we'll have that to do it. And if it gets down to 20, then we say, okay, for the next two or three years, we'll build it back yeah. up to 25. And if it gets north of 25, great. But, you know, there are some districts that sit with, you know, plus 30% reserves, you know, this administration and the board that's set here at the dais has been, you know, we need to be spending taxpayer dollars on the students and people here now and not just saving, saving, saving. Be responsible and have savings. And we feel that 25 is a really responsible. North of 25 is great. You know, getting below 20, we need to tighten our belts back up. So that's kind of our philosophy. Yeah. Of where it's we our philosophy and policy. We have a fund yes. balance policy that if you deficit spend for more than two years, you have to have a plan in place to you know, pay that back. So 
Ebb but again, there's a difference between deficit yeah. spending and one-time expense. Yes, it is. Yeah. So deficit spending is like, okay, we Joel sit here for two Junes in a row and we're like, we don't, you know, we're spending more than what we're projected yeah. revenue is. Then no, we're not doing that. Then we're not, we're not even close to doing that. No. So, so I want to make sure that we're not deficit clear. spending yeah, with recurring spending. dollars. Are we've always, yes, we've always that's deficit spending. revenue haven't matched expenditures because of strategic one-time spending yes. of savings. That's what's brought the fund yeah. balance down to strategic yeah. one-time. This is not a reoccurring expense. It's to fix things and to get things operating. The way furniture for the new high school. Furniture a for a new high school. <laughs> you know, furniture in all of our buildings. You know, we've been replacing furniture in all of our buildings. It's just it's that time of the life cycle of the organization. So, anyways. Any questions from the board members? I have. This is a kind of random question, but I, I was curious. It's a. I need a history lesson. Um, because one of the lines in the budget, on, it's for the revenue I was looking at on the school lunch program. Mm -hmm. You're projecting about 530000 this year, mm -hmm. and last year actual was 487, but in prior years it was $1.1 million and then that was $3 when, million. Well, So what happened? What happened was we were in COVID and all lunches were free. And oh, so the okay. federal government was paying us the free reimbursement rate on every meal. COVID strikes again. Yeah. Okay. And so that was a lot of federal money. Yep. So that was all part of COVID. So okay. that's going to help us pay. We do have some balance in our food service accounts because of that. And so we are buying some new dish machines and, and things that in the next year. But that was nice. Every kid was eating free, and we were getting money from the, the government for every kid that ate. So Okay. Thank you yep. for all your work on yep. getting this budget put together. I know that's a lot of work, and especially for bringing the fund balance up. I know that's something I... That's you guys. That's a board, you know, the board works on that. Every so. time I talk to anybody, is I'm, I'm much more comfortable with it in the in the 20s, so thank you for working on that. Yeah, it takes a team. Um, I have a question about if you could just explain yep. um, the fiduciary student activities that's included in the general fund balances. Mm -hmm. Um, sorry for the echo here. What am I doing to make it do that? <laughs> um, coming from the booster world, um, mm -hmm. you know, like I can see on here, um, uh, on high school honor society, mm -hmm. so that I understand what we would probably be holding in there for them. But some of the, there's a, quite a bit of difference between some of the sports and mm -hmm. some of the other organizations. Some may have booster yeah. clubs, some may not. Yeah. So maybe the reason why some of these activities have very low numbers in our accounting here it's is because the booster, the booster group it, yeah. holds yeah. more of it. Yeah. These are strictly um, accounts managed by teachers at the high school or other staff um, for district programs, and it's all fundraising dollars. So like you said, this isn't boosters. Boosters are out separate. Some of these groups have booster some don't. I mean, you know, like football does, band does, um, but these are all managed by um, Lindbergh teachers. I think the one in there that isn't, though, is like you see parking fees. That's an Eric Cochran account, and it's fee-based. So, you know, if we get parking fees, it goes in here. He uses it for those purposes. So it's all revenue that was either generated by a payment or a student fundraiser. Um, so that's all student dollars for their programs. Yep. And we we don't count that as general funds because it's student money. Yep. So then we also aren't the ones, well, obviously not we, but mm -hmm. the individual groups decide how that money is spent. Yes. That's not they anything still, that is no. used in they any They still have to budgeting. follow the district policy and procedure and do POs and it has to be all of our, they have to follow all of our procedures um, when making a purchase. So that's, they're usually fundraising for an event or travel or maybe new uniforms. There's various reasons. As you can see, there's three pages of student activity accounts, um, and they all have a different reason why they fundraise. Yep. Well, I want to echo Julia's thank you to everybody for the work, and I especially am grateful for the opportunity to have served a few meetings on the Finance Committee, having yep. recently joined the board. Uh, I did as much as much as I was able to learn before I, I well, as I was running and before I was elected, but um, the work you guys do is amazing, and I appreciate the time you take to explain it. And for those that are watching, there is so much information that is on here. If you just dig into it, um, it's really quite helpful. So thank you guys. I appreciate thank you. it. Appreciate it. Anybody else? No, we're good. Okay. Yes, thank you, Joelle and team. Amazing work. So many moving parts. And um, again, this is preliminary because the changes are coming ahead. So uh, all in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes, 6-0. We'll move on to 5.0, the adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn special board meeting 1599? So moved. Julia. Second. Is that Megan or Andrew? Megan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes, 6-0 for special board meeting 1599, and it is adjourned. <laughs>